Hello everyone and uh, welcome to the K4 Matrix podcast. My name is Vivek and the theme of this podcast is crafting a CFT career in India. So we have with us Jay Makija, who is the computational fluid dynamics or a CFT engineer in Euler Motors Private Limited. So now, without further ado, let's get into the subject. So now, Jay, uh, so when I was in class 11th and 12th, so even though I had taken uh, you know computer science as the option, my interest in automobiles, uh, ice engines, etc., grew a lot, and then I decided to pursue mechanical engineering. Now I understand that you have also pursued mechanical. So my question is, so, so when and how did you decide that you would pursue mechanical? Yeah, so I same like you. I remember during my time when I just completed my. 12th board exams and I was preparing for college entrances. I was debating whether I should pursue automobile or aerospace engineering as I had a passion for both fast cars and rockets. Uh, okay. And mechanical engineering was not really my first choice and it was quite far away from what I had planned to study for my undergrad. But then I took up mechanical engineering as it gave me more time to decide where do I want to specialize in. As after mechanical engineering, you can either specialize in automobile engineering or as or aerospace engineering as well. And also, it no, gave me a okay. chance to experience both fields and also give me an option if I want to change fields in the future as well. Okay, oh, that's good. That's great. Uh, now, when I was doing my bachelor's, actually, so it was kind of hard for me to decide as to you know in what area uh, would I want to pursue my career. So, uh, like you mentioned that uh, there would be more options when you took mechanical, but uh, is it like the pursuing your career in CFT, did you decide that while you were doing your bachelor's or was it something else after you completed your degree and that made you decide on pursuing your career in CFT? I actually wanted to give CFT a shot as a career option because again it allowed me to explore both the automobile as well as the aerospace sector because in the aerospace sector you have CFT as a use case for aerodynamics of various aerial vehicles as well as for your propulsion subsystem as well and also uh, in the automobile sector you have your uh, spark ignition and uh, combustion ignition uh, engines which uh, have combustion simula simulations and also you have HVAC simulations, you have aerodynamic simulations for optimizing the range of your vehicle and it's not uh, always limited to commercial vehicles, it also extends to Formula 1 cars and also with the rise of yeah. electric vehicles, your battery cooling strategies are also uh, finalized with the help of CFT simulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Related to this, uh, you know, like deciding what uh, area that I want to specialize in. So to decide this, I had, uh, you know, taken up some certification courses, like, you know, learning some CAD tools or CA tools. And I thought this might give me an idea as to what I can do further after uh, the bachelor's. Now, uh, one thing I understand from you is that you have done projects from Skilllink. Now, so now, how did you get this chance and do you recommend this? Oh, uh, yes. So, actually, Skilling is uh, offers online courses and that's what I opted for. Uh, so, there was this one course which they offered, uh, which provided, which taught you the basics of CFT, uh, combined with solver development and open form and few tutorials on, uh, on MATLAB as well. So, it gave me a good understanding of how your basics, navier stokes equations are formed the different discretization schemes used in various commercial solvers and also how to build a 1D solver and I felt that the course is a good way to start your path into CFT. Oh, okay. Okay, that's great. So now, so apart from this, uh, after you pursued the uh, skilling, was there any other certifications, certification courses you did uh, while doing your bachelor's and also what was the idea behind it? Not really. I do not take up any significant uh, big uh, certified course other than skilling. I felt okay. skilling was a really good start into my path into CFT. And uh, there are other resources 
I looked up to such as YouTube, which has quite mm-hmm. a lot of good channels which teach you the basics of CFD, and I relied okay. more on those forms other than certified. Okay, okay. So, uh, is there any uh, recommend like do you recommend any sites or any channels while mentioning YouTube? So, is there anything you would like to recommend? Uh, like, where is the which is the best uh, place to, you know, uh, do this? Uh, like, go by these videos and uh, learn the basics of CFT. So one YouTube channel I can remember right now is this YouTube channel called Fluid Mechanics One Hundred One. Okay. It's uh, it's for uh, the content is created by a PhD scholar by the name of Adrian Wimshurt. And his, his, uh, he has a very good understanding of the basics of CFD and also how the discretization works. And also, it is a lot more relevant, I feel, and it's a good way to start. Oh, okay, that's great. So I hope uh, this will help our uh, viewers and uh, listeners to start through. So now. Uh, I understand you had uh, designed and analyzed, you know, brake rotors for FSA vehicles. Uh, actually, uh, this made me remember actually when I was doing my bachelor's. So I also had participated in a hybrid vehicle competition, you know, conducted by ISI India. Yeah. So uh, we had actually built a hybrid vehicle uh, that runs on gasoline and electric. So there was a switch with where you can uh, switch between those two. And so I was part of uh, the design and fabrication of uh, the suspension systems. So now this actually uh, doing this project actually helped me a lot in terms of you know learning new tools, uh, dealing with pressure, straight lines, presentations, uh, etc. Uh, so uh, what was your experience with the FSA competition? So what did you learn, and did it help for your uh, career? So uh, uh, first, I'll talk about the brake rotors part. So I mainly worked as a brake engineer in my student team. So without the main description of the role over there in the in the team would be designing and assembling the brake system in our vehicle. So if you come across any uh, any brake rotors on any passenger vehicle, two wheeler or four wheeler, you would see there there are mainly two types of rotors being used. You have your drilled rotors or else your slotted rotors. I wanted to experiment with other designs and also perform a trade-off between multiple designs so I could ensure that the best design is there in our student team cycle. Uh, this and I feel this was a very good experience for me because uh, I was contributing to one major subsystem uh, of the vehicle which the drivers heavily relied on because as a driver you would be. Confident in accelerating a vehicle to the limit as long as you know your braking system is also performing that. Way. Yeah. And uh, and coming to the formula for an experience, so uh, I was actually part of the off-road team, not formula for an accident. So mainly our team was uh, designing and fabricating an all-terrain vehicle, and uh, being an off-road vehicle, your you are bound to test your vehicle in a very rigorous manner. So, how this uh, the uh, the competitions operate in a similar manner to Formula Student competitions, where you have a year's time for starting your designing process of your multiple subsystems like your transmission, suspension, steering, JC, and then you go to fabrication and assembly, where you always go either you are going to the city to procure parts or you have all nighters in, in fabricating in your fab bay as such or uh, you have belt, you have the welding of your chc and you end up yeah. having these long nights daily on a daily basis other than your classes and then oh, yeah. you after, no, that's true. yeah it is it's quite hectic but i feel it's worth the struggle at the same time and then at the same time you have testing going on of the vehicle once everything is ready and then you have to ship it up for, for the competition and then you have a yeah. competition where like it's a very uh, exciting experience because you are up against other students from other teams who are doing mm-hmm. who are trying who are trying their best to build just the best vehicle in the, for the competition whereas you are also trying to do the same thing but there's no intense rivalry as such, but there's a sort of companionship and a brotherhood form 
because you can relate to their experiences uh, because they are also trying to do the best as well as you so yeah. uh, for the off road vehicle uh, mainly uh, you would have your vehicle being tested in a very tough terrain whereas uh, where you would have to have a acceleration test you would have a braking test which is common uh, similar to your formula one competitions but then the difference comes when you have to test your vehicle in multiple terrains uh, and it's not yeah. only a flat road you are going to have to drive your vehicle over bricks stones even tires and there was one time i remember where we had to drive our vehicle through a trench of mud and uh, we had to build claws which had to be attached mm-hmm. to our tires because your normal tires aren't sufficient enough to overcome the mud and have the ro- have the rolling motion over so then yeah. also there were also times where i remember where we had to drive where the driver had to drive the vehicle through a pool of water and they, when you do that water is bound to enter your exhaust so there have been some very intense competitions uh, with the off roading team and also last you would have your endurance so yeah. then, i remember during this endurance part you will have to almost drive your vehicle for 3 to 4 hours non stop and i would, at the end you would have you would see the driver being entirely drained out of energy and he, yeah. he would barely have the energy to stand in one place so i if you feel a lot of driving an uh, off road endurance is very tough and yeah. uh, it's with all the effort put out throughout the year i was uh, i'm privileged to say that our team won first place in two national level competitions in 2018 and because of that i feel it was a very good experience and want to remember for a very long time yeah yeah i think uh... Ah, uh, you had won the awards in uh, quad torque championship, right? That's the one, and uh, the second one would be quad bike design challenge. Yes. And so this participation, uh, yeah, yeah. So this participation was while you were doing your uh, degree, or was this after you had completed? This was uh, during my undergrad. So mainly for the student teams, they have their uh, you have your work going on after college hours. and you yeah, mainly the work is after college hours and you have it every day and throughout the year you have it until the competition and then you go for the competition yeah so actually when did you uh, the first when did you start participating or like uh, decided to go to these projects in the sense like what we had done was we what i mentioned this hybrid vehicle competition so we did that during our third year so that is the sixth sem actually we started now the issue was we finished it took about one year the complete competition right from design to the uh, dynamic event now uh, so by the end of seventh sem uh, we finished this uh, competition and on eighth sem actually we had our final year uh, projects and so since we started during sixth sem so we didn't get a chance we didn't get a second chance to uh, you know do some more on our uh, project and uh, go back to uh, this kind of competitions so that's the reason i was asking when did you actually uh, start for this okay uh, so i started during the start of my second year in college which is the third semester and i okay. was there in the team for a year okay okay uh, yeah. so you uh, do you recommend students to uh, participate more in these kinds of competitions yes, yes definitely Uh, so basically, uh, the main reason why I like Formula Student and even Baha, for example, is because they teach you uh, beyond their classes, and also it's a yeah. more hands-on experience, uh, which is something you might have in theory classes through labs. But this is something I personally connect with more, and mm-hmm. I feel it was a huge learning experience for me, and it's something y- you will. eventually apply in the future that's yeah that's big luck yeah. in terms of form of learning of baha yeah yeah and also yeah it is better to start uh, earlier when you are doing your bachelor's actually and uh, so one of the things happened was when we were uh, in the dynamic event so we clear technical inspection 
but uh, there was this uh, brake challenge where uh, you have to uh, move your car and then have to apply brakes such that uh, all the four tires would get knocked yes. and uh, that's where actually uh, our, our car tire didn't get locked and we were disqualified after that but okay. uh, yeah since it was already seven sem we didn't get a second chance to go back so i would recommend all our uh, viewers listeners to if you are uh, interesting in participating in these kind of events to start when you enter your degree now uh, so whatever you should, yeah yeah so now usually these institutions uh, you know conduct mini project competitions uh, like that for where uh, you are studying so you know this could be a uh, separate of the final year project or you know for, uh, in this court or core uh, court by competitions so uh, were you part of any such mini projects like this yes so actually uh, after my student team i decided to work under a research professor in my university and uh, this was the first time i was actually exposed to uh, cft as such because he was a uh, his niche was the, uh, mainly cft simulations for uh, combustion in uh, diesel engines okay and uh, so basically i just approached him saying he i want to like work on you for a while i want to learn what cft is and everything and he recommended me for few books to start learning of it and then start off with few simple problems like flow or flow over a cylinder and then it uh, then he put me into few big projects and he also put me under his under my seniors project for his final year thesis which was basically to solve the aerodynamics of a artillery shell and uh, no. later when my thesis came uh, we decided to work on the aerodynamics of a rocket oh okay okay oh well, that's very weird yeah yeah so, uh, now apart from this i understand that you have uh, done two internships so now uh, was this uh, through the institution or did you apply for them separately i applied for them separately by reaching out to the hr team of multiple companies or the hiring manager and oh, okay so uh, what were the uh, steps involved in that in the sense after you applied for it and what were the other steps after that so uh, mainly my two internships uh, comprised of one internship where i was working in a, where i was interning in a automobile mnc uh mm -hmm. so this was based out of the factory mainly and this okay. uh, this internship mainly helped me uh, gain uh, gain an idea about how a factory runs and what are the manufacturing processes involved to manufacturing process involved to build a engine and then uh, the assembly process for the entire vehicle so in mainly automobile factories you have these huge lines where you have for uh, for, for the manufacturing of engines and then you have a separate line for the assembly of the assembly of the vehicle and uh, mm -hmm. it was a very good uh, learning experience and also it taught me how quality assurance works in big companies so oh, that okay. was my first internship uh, my second internship was in an engineering services company uh, so the project which i was assigned for was to design a helicopter blade this was quite an interesting project because you have multiple dynamic situations uh, involved with a helicopter which mm -hmm. which initially starts with your take off from the launch pad and then you have the gliding motion of the helicopter along four directions and also you have a scenario where you need to account for the stall of the helicopter which is essentially staying which is holding the helicopter in one fixed position so okay. designing a blade for this multiple dynamic situations was quite interesting i found it personally very interesting and it was a very good experience for me okay so uh, was this uh, your final year project or uh, is this something only for the internship so you know like uh, for some some uh, some people actually uh, for their final year projects they go to some industry and do their projects so was this uh, part no, of that so, no no uh, so my first internship was uh, made compulsory as per the curriculum but my second inter internship i pursued out of personal interest as the company was majoring into with the major products were cft services for defense and defense company okay 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 fine 
so i take it that uh, so these internships apart from your curriculum would uh, would be useful uh, while uh, doing the degree for uh, the career aspect okay. as well okay. uh, so you even though an internship might be a it might be a general short duration and not as long as how how long you work in a company but definitely mm -hmm. gives you an idea about how your how the industry works and the yeah. something i feel you should have a small bit of idea before you actually get into a full time job yeah yeah that's true actually yeah that's very good yeah. so uh, now uh, coming to the uh, places you have worked so i understand that you have uh, worked with technical cosmos so what was your experience with uh, so uh, this being my first job it was it had a huge learning curve involved because being in a startup you have your long hours and extra days of work but i also got a chance to work on building a launch vehicle which for me was personally very exciting uh, <laughs> and also another advantage of working in a startup is you build a product from scratch so uh, this is this is like uh, the main advantage i feel of working in a startup and also you when you are working on it during the initial nascent days of the company itself you get to set up systems for the design and the simulation processes one aspect of the job which i really like was getting feedback from the getting feedback on the work done from chief engineers and department heads of which know who retired from the organization because it's the perfect example of learning from the best as they were leading their teams in building the PSLV and JSLV rockets which are very good yeah yeah so that's that's great actually yeah yeah another positive i can recall from that experience is that coming from a mechanical background i learned a lot about other subsystems involved in building a rocket and also it made me realize why rocket science is hard and i get why people say it okay thanks oh wow wow so you it seems like you had a pretty great experience with amukul cosmos yeah so uh so now you have actually published two papers uh so yes, was this after you joined amukul or like any company or was this when you were uh, pursuing your degree actually most of my work was uh, most of the work done for the research papers was done during my bachelor's and mm -hmm. then the publication of one paper was done before i graduated and another uh, was put out in a journal after i graduated uh, this is because uh, the second paper there was a back and forth process going on with the journal itself and also if there was the covid pandemic which occurred which resulted in a slight bit of delay for the publication process but then okay. my work was the 90% of the work you would say was done during my undergrad and it was okay. mainly yeah. with the research professor who I did my final thesis okay so both uh, the papers were uh, with that uh, professor who you worked under they were the same professor okay okay great now you were also a member of uh, ice so that which is a not for profit organization which that provides young people with leadership development uh, cross cultural internship etc so now what was your experience with uh, being a member of ice and did this help in any way with uh, your career uh, so i actually joined ice in my first year because i was looking to understand how the non core engineering side of life works uh okay so i had a very short stint over there and it's more of a networking forum in my opinion and not much help to someone who's looking to build a career in core engineering oh okay okay now actually at present now you are working in oil and motors so uh, what has been your uh, learning and experience working in this company uh, my experience has been very good here okay because uh, in the ev sector in general is quite promising and it yeah. it has a bright future ahead and it's something i'm very proud of the main again i chose a startup because you are never really limited by the role you are assigned to for i initially joined oiler to work on the aerodynamics of the vehicle but then mm -hmm. i am also working on battery cooling systems and also working on system level modeling of the entire vehicle itself so 
you are always learning more than what you intended to and also another good part of this experience is that uh, whatever knowledge i gained in my college time which is with uh, the student team as well as cft i am actually applying it over here as uh, yeah. you have the you from of the student team being a building a automobile in general uh, you have a lot of common subsystems right except for the combustion and the electric driven power unit your principles yeah. applied in all subsystems are more or less the same so combining that knowledge gained in the student team with cft work done with my professor i feel that the extra extra roles which i took up during my undergrad degree are paying off Wow, that's great. That's great. Yeah. So now uh, coming to uh, the last part. So, is there anything you would like to uh, think for our student listeners or viewers who are actually planning to pursue their career in CFT? Uh, I just have two tips to share. Uh, first would be to get a good understanding of how your theory and basics work in CFT, and then dwell into the software because. Otherwise, you do not have any logic for how to set up your simulations and validate your results. Uh, mm -hmm. Another tip I would suggest is that open source CFD is the future because upscaling in open source CFD in India might not seem very bright right now, but then a lot of companies I feel are shifting to a open source workflow. One big example I can take of right now is Formula One, which is the mm -hmm. pinnacle of automobile technology. And they are using OpenFoam uh, combined with uh, Amazon Web Services, and I feel the wave of open source CFT would come to India as well soon, and it would be good if they're prepared. Okay, okay. So, uh, Jay, actually, uh, this was wonderful, and uh, thank you so much for taking your time and uh, being a part of this podcast. So, I also thank all the. I also thank all the viewers for listening to our podcast. And if you have found this podcast informative, so please do share with share this with your friends and family. And we frequently upload technical updates on CFT and as well as the software we distribute in India. So do follow K4 Metrics on LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. So that is all for this episode. So thanks again, and see you next time.